Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm just smiling because Maverick has literally just buzzed past my window, as his is wont. Um, and so hopefully there will be a small window now when the windows when the windows themselves will not shake. Um, what are we going to be having a look at today? Well, a beautiful looking puzzle called Diamond in the Rough by F Jam. Uh, and this is apparently a bit easier than the last couple of days. So I had a two hour video on Monday and then an hour and a quarter doing battle with uh, Ard van der Vetering yesterday. It should be renamed Hard van der Vetering if last night's puzzle was anything to go by. Um, but this one is just two stars out of five for difficulty and the testers say it's really gorgeous as well. In fact, just before I turned on the webcam and Maverick buzzed past my window, I did snip some of the comments uh, on this puzzle. And you can see um, there are some very well-known names from the Sudoku community there, all of whom are basically saying this is lovely, uh, hugely popularly rated as well. So this is what we're going to have a go at. It's basically region some lines, um, which I'll explain in a moment and some crop key dots by the looks of things um, and F Jam I know F Jam from actually some quite difficult puzzles Grave, I want to say the graveyard of ideas the graveyard of there's a whole series of graveyard puzzles where killer cages have have what looks like they're sort of dates of death on them um, they they are fabulous puzzles Ah, yeah, I've done one of those in the last few months. I know I have, but um, but anyway, this is this is not one of those. This is something different and probably a bit easier. Uh, now, other news. I need to thank you if you joined us for our stream last night of Islands of Insight. Again, we really enjoyed it. What a game! The only thing that we're worried about with that game is that some of the people um in chat were saying you know they spent a hundred hours 200 hours on the game and were nowhere near finishing it so we've got no <laughs> we've really got no clue how we're going to approach that subject because we can't see ourselves doing you know 50 streams of, of that game um so what we might do i talked to mark about this earlier um is i might just record myself uh playing the game um and then if any of you do want to continue with me on that on the journey through Islands of Insight, I'll probably put the videos on Patreon um, as and when as and when I play it, as and when I get the chance to, to record it. So if, if you do want to stay with me on the journey, there will be the opportunity. Um, but probably there won't be too many more streams where, where it's the two of us doing battle simply because we can't we can't cope with the length of the game. Um, this this <laughs> this channel's meant to be about logic puzzles, which which do exist in Islands of Insight, actually. Although we didn't seem to find as many, we seemed to find a lot of glass walls yesterday. Um, anyway, that's that's one thought we've had uh, over on Patreon as well. You've still got one week to solve this month's competition puzzles. Uh, the Sudoku hunt called Evening Attractions. Closing date is the twentieth of March. Plenty of time to get your entries in. Um, other news. Let's let's look at other things. Happy birthdays. I've got a six month happy birthday to little Layla, who has turned six months old today. I know this because your father Dowd wrote to us, Layla. Um, apparently you might even recognize our voices. So I hope that's true. And you're celebrating today with your first solids. <laughs> Probably not chocolate cake, I'm guessing. But I hope that goes well and you enjoy sort of real food. Um, and and you might see your daddy's um, your daddy's puzzle in Mark's video later. I know I know he was scheduled to take a look at that, so I, I hope that happens. Um, but Layla, many happy returns on reaching the final age of six months. Uh, and then Tim, it's your birthday today, and I'm assured that you are one of Cracking the Cryptic's most uh, fervent followers um, by your girlfriend Amisha. Um, and I love this. Uh, Tim introduced Amisha to Cracking the Cryptic via Zoom dates during the pandemic. So they were having Zoom dates and would end up watching Cracking the Cryptic videos. Well, there's no better date than that. Um, and Amisha, I know you're baking Tim a cake. I think you know what type of cake that has to be. And I'm assured that Tim watches even the longest videos. So the last couple of days probably have, have been good for Tim, at least. 
and that's all the birthdays. So let's have a look at Diamond in the Rough and see what F Jam has in store for us. These are the rules of the puzzle. We have got normal Sudoku rules, which means we have to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. And then box borders divide each blue line into segments with the same sum. So what does that mean? Let's have a look at this great big thing in the middle of the grid. So box borders, we have to, we go along a line until we meet a box border. So that's one segment. Um, those will get, those are all occurring in box five along the line. So that's another segment, I think. Those will be a segment. Those will be a segment. Oh, blue's probably a bad color. Let's go orange and we'll go gray for that, that segment. So I think that's how this great big line. So what we have to make sure is say these added up to 10, these would add up to 10, these would add up to 10, these would add up to 10, and those four would add up to 10 is how region sum lines work. Um, and then cells separated by a black dot must contain digits with a ratio of one to two, which means that one digit will be double the other. So imagine this square here was a two, this square here is either one or four because one well, two is double one and four is double two. So that's how black dots work. Not all dots are given. And that's there just to allay any fear that you might have. Let's say this was a two, four pair. There doesn't have to be a black dot between two digits where one is double the other. It's just in these particular dominoes, it is true to say that one digit will definitely be double the other. Maverick's about to buzz past again. Perfect timing as usual. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play, let's get cracking. Um, now, I, th I imagine it's gonna be about this great big thing. Is this the meant to be the diamond? Is I suppose it is a diamond, isn't it? It is certainly a diamond in the center, if not in the rough. Um, I'm just wondering if we can just do maths on row five and column five that is probably what we're meant to do and avail ourselves of a certain secret that i normally only share with my very favorite people um don't worry if you're watching this video you're definitely one of my favorite people let me just think about this so that's 90 but that's counted twice i feel like this wants to be divisible by five is that true? Um, I think it is true. Yeah, okay. Okay, I think we might be able to prove that the central digit is a five. And the, the way I'm getting to that is, is it's not that complicated, basically. All we have to know is the secret. Now, the secret tells us the sum of those nine cells um, because these nine cells are a complete row of the Sudoku, and therefore they are the digits one to nine once each, and therefore they sum to 45. That is the secret. But this column will also contain, a, obviously the digits one to nine once each, so this also sums to 45. Now, that means that we could describe the total contents of yellow plus green as 90, if we count this cell twice, because this is obviously it's what it's in this row once and it's in this column once. So in order to describe the total contents of column five and row five, we need to include this digit twice in that sum. Now, if you look carefully, you can see there's an enormous overlap between yellow, green and this blue shape thing. They are almost identical. The only difference between them is the central cell. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's count how many, how many, how many different um, segments we've got along the diamonds in the rough shape. We've got one segment, two segments, three segments, four segments, five segments. So what we know is that five times X, where X is the sum of any segment plus two lots of the central digit 
is equal to 90. Well, given therefore that whatever we put in here, once we deduct it from 90, has to leave a number that's divisible by 5, I think that has to be divisible by 5 itself. And therefore it's got to be 5, because that's the only Sudoku digit that will work, um, that, that, that sort of has that property, because 90 is divisible by 5. And once we take two lots of this digit out, um, uh, in order to arrive at sort of 5x on the other side of the equation, we're not going to be able to take anything other than 5 here and leave a number that's divisible by 5. So that is our first digit, I think. And, and now we know that 5x is equal to 90 minus 2 lots of 5, which is 80. And that means x is equal to 16. Right, so now, now we can go... Now we probably lose the colours, do we? Is that what we do now? Lose the colours. And note that each segment along the diamond contains digits that sum to, to 16. I actually, I think I might restore some colour so we can, we can have a bit of a chromatic, we can have a bit of a chromatic look at this. Now 16, no, 16 is not brilliant. That's not great because the average sum of three different Sudoku digits is 15 because the average Sudoku digit is a five. So, I mean, admittedly, these can't actually be five, but 15 would be a very unsurprising total for three different cells and we get 16. So we get hardly any, any restriction. It might be about... Um, no, it's not. I wondered I wondered if it was going to be about um, where the 9 or where the 1 went in this row. Because if you put 1 on this line, in this 3-cell segment at least, these the other two digits would have to add up to 15. But they could be 6, 9 or 7, 8 in that case. And if you put 9 on the line, the other two digits have to add up to 7. I suppose they couldn't be 2, 5, but they could still be 1, 6 or 3, 4. So... Hmm. Hmm. So, I've got to do something else then. Let me just have a stare at this. Uh, it's going to be... It's not about where 7 and 9 go in the middle box, is it? I'm just thinking, there are three digits in Sudoku that you cannot ever place on a black dot because they have no valid Sudoku digit that's either double or half them. And they are the digits five, which has already appeared in box five, seven, because three and a half and 14 are not Sudoku digits, and nine, because four and a half and 18 are not Sudoku digits. So seven and nine, which can't both go in orange because they'd already add up to 16 themselves. And then these two would have to both be zero. So only one of them can go in these squares so one of them at least or both must go in those squares oh yeah okay i suppose um if we look at the structure of this region sum line we can see these three digits which are all different digits sum to just this cell so that is at least equal to six I mean, it doesn't tell us it's not 7 or 9, but it makes it quite likely it is 7 or 9. If it was 7, then you'd have 1, 2, 4 on both strings. Uh, and uh, even that's okay, I think. That would put... Well, I'll make these a 1, 2, 4 triple. I think it might make this 4 and 8. And these are 1, 2 pair. And that could be a 3, 6 pair. That would, that would work as well. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me just... Sorry, I'm not seeing it yet. I think... 
Oh, is it the sum of those three then? Is it the secret again? Because I know grey adds up to 16. These add up to some number that's 6, 7, 8 or 9. So if these only added up to 6, that would be 22. These would add up to 23. That's still OK. 6, 8, 9. I would give two options for the black dot as well. What about if this is 9? Then these are 25. These add up to 20. Hmm. That's even that's quite happy, isn't it? Oh dear, so what am I missing here? Is, these, is it something to do with those four having to add up to 16 without using a 5? Do we have to have a 1 in there? What if they didn't have 1? They would be 2, 3, 4, 6 at a minimum. That's only, fifth, that's only 15, so you could do 2, 3, 4, 7. Um, so that's not a very sensible thought either. Oh, bobbins, right. Right, it's not, it, you don't look at the, you just look at the, you just look at this row. <laughs> it's not very difficult, actually. Sorry, sorry if you've been shouting at me, you would be with in your rights. Look at row five. Purple adds up to 16. Yellow adds up to 16. That's 32. Five plus 32 is 37. So those add up to eight. And that means those add up to 8 by exactly the same logic on this column. And if you're making those add up to 8 and you can't use 5, and you're making these use add up to 8 and, they, and you can't use 5, the option of 3, 5 for an 8 pair is not available. So these have to be a 1, 7 pair and a 2, 6 pair in some order. And that is new information. 7 can never go on a black dot. We've, we even we even thought about that. Oh well, okay. So so now the combination that adds up to to eight across the central row has to be two six. So the seven is vertical, and that must go with a one. And all of a sudden, we're doing better, aren't we? Right. So this ah this, oh okay. So that's not six or seven. That is eight or nine. Uh, this digit is three or four. Is that the same for this then? Yeah, that's also three or four. So this digit is eight or nine by a process known in the trade as Sudoku. Um, so If that's eight, it can't be one, three, four. It would have to be one, two, five. But if it's nine, I think that there are probably several options. Apart, the only thing you can't have is two, three, four. Ah, so there's always a one. There's always a one on that string of digits. But and that's sorry. That the reason for that is if this is nine. There are three ways to make nine in a three cell sequence. One, three, five, one, two, six, and two, three, four. But two, three, four will break this square. And that's going to be the same here. Right, so, so, so because two, three, four isn't possible, there must be a one on this string because eight in three cells always requires a one. Now the same is true here. And that's actually, it's better this way. It's better because that's going to affect this square. Because this can't be 2, 3, 4 because of this square. This is very nicely set, isn't it? It's very nice, that. So 1 is now over here in a yellow sequence that adds to 16. Yeah, and this has to be 1, 7, 8. Because it can't involve uh, the 6, 9 pair anymore because we've got a 6 now in row 5. And that means... There's a seven in one of those squares, which has to be on the on the on the on the region sum line, because seven here will won't work. Three and a half and fourteen are not possible digits, and we now know these digits are three, four, and nine, and therefore we know that this sequence is. Let's just work this out. Oh no, we don't. We haven't improved our knowledge of this at all. If this is eight. This is one, two, five. If this is nine, ah, no, we have a bit. We have a bit because 
if this is 9, this can't be 135 anymore. So it would have to be 126. So this is either 126 or 125. It's definitely got 2 on it now. Which means 2 is down there. There's no, oh, there's no black dots. Oh yeah, there's, sorry, the symmetry is quite different. The symmetry is up there. But there's no black dot here and there's no black dot. And there is a black dot here. So the, the sort of symmetry is not going to help us. It's more a symmetry around the negative diagonal, isn't it? Which is very close to being exact symmetry. Just these black dots in the center that sort of affect it. Um, no, even those, even those are very nicely positioned from that perspective. It's sort of rotationally symmetrical. Where's eight in this box? That seems a reasonable question. It's got to be down there. So that's got to be nine. That's got to be eight. Right. Okay. So that's going to, well, that's doing everything. That's absolutely huge. Because now this line and this line have to be one, two, five triples because they're, we're adding up to eight and neither can be one, three, four. So now we know what these digits are. These are six, seven and eight, I think. And we can't put seven on the, on the dot. So that square is three or four on the dot. And do we, can we resolve the threes and the fours now or not? Yes, we can use this one. Ah, uh, this line, this line at the top really is doing a disambiguating service, isn't it? It is, it is Atlas hoisting up an awful lot of stuff on its back because this has got to be a six now, that's got to be a two, so that's got to be a four, that's got to be a three. Now we know what those digits are, which are two, five, and uh, Four, two, four, five. Is that all? Very low. Two, four, five. These digits are three, six, nine. Um, can I get those digits? Probably not. Uh, well, there is a two on the green string at the bottom. And we're heading up towards six. Yeah, we can get this. This has got to be two, six, eight. Because the other two digits that are not two have to not be five and nine, look. So now we know these squares are three, four, nine. Which I feel like I've had that before. I did, I got that there. Yes, yeah, so there's an awful lot of symmetry now, look. It's just the sort of central boxes dynamics that are affecting certain positions. Yeah, the two here spills out. Yeah, so it's sort of, we get a two six pair rather than a one seven pair along those green and yellow. Um, okay, but we can fill these digits in now. They are six, seven and eight. Of course they are because they were. You can't, again, you can't put seven on the dot. So this is three or four. These squares at the bottom are one, three and five, which are all odd numbers. Right, so that's very beautiful. That's going to give me this digit by parity because if these are odd, the sum of that, that little segment, segment, what's a segment? The sum of that little segment uh, must be even. And therefore this must have two digits of the same parity. So it can't include five. Uh, so this is a five. This is a, well, okay. Now this is a two, four pair, which adds up to six. So these have to add up to six and don't evolve three. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. So that's a six. Um, yes. Okay. This is this is a nice feature of the the wording of the region sum lines rules nowadays because this used to be something where you would worry about the fact. Okay. Well, there are five instances of this line in box nine. And you'd have to have complicated rules to sort of say, OK, if a line goes in and out of a box, this is how you treat it. But now the new wording 
this this is absolutely fine because basically we go along and wherever there's a box border we start a new segment until we find another box border so we know that this box board this segment that is that cell is a complete segment of the line so it must sum to six and and we know each of these segments that segment and that segment have to sum to six so these must be the two different ways that you can make pairs of sudoku digits add up to six so they've got to be one five and two four in some order uh, which means these squares are now i was going to say they're seven eight they're three seven eight and nine aren't they which is a little oh, no three in the corner at least not here i might get a three up there possibly um okay so now what do we do we can label these squares up they've got to be four seven and nine i think there must be a nine on this on this little segment i think four and seven is eleven the minimum sum of this domino is 13 if it was six and seven in fact there is de ah, there is definitely a seven isn't there on this line because it can't the seven can't go there so this is either adding up to 13 and four and nine or it's adding up to 15 and we can't make that add up to 15 no combination of four seven and nine summed together will add up to 15 so this is this doesn't include eight i think so the eight goes on the black dot that's a four that's not four but this is this there's, this is a four nine pair so we can fill it in So that's a seven at the bottom of the grid. These two squares have to add up to seven and they're not three, four. So these are either one, six or two, five. I'm actually going to label that uh, just to sort of keep that in my brain. Four, where is four in this box now? It's got to go there. So that's got to be a two. These squares have got to be a one, five pair. That's going to give one, five pairs in row... Um, row seven and eight so this is not one or five this is two or six it's not two that's six then so that's one by mathematics so that's six by sudoku this is two this is eight seven ah that's useful so we've now got an eight nine pair in this box so this is a three seven pair the 2-4 pair above is, is resolved by Sudoku again. So there's got to be 2... Ah, yeah, okay. There's got to be 2 and 4 in these squares. So that becomes 3. And the symmetry is slightly broken again there. Lovely. Right, and these add up to 15. So these have to add up to 15. And they don't include a 3. So... Ah, okay. Well, that's a 3. That's about, as, about the most powerful thing it can be. Because that has to be a 1-2 pair. And the two must be on the right hand side by Sudoku. That gives us the one and the five. Good grief. I think this might even be finishing. Look, there's more Sudoku to do. Six, seven. One goes here. Six, nine is done. Nine, eight at the bottom is done. These two squares are five and seven. That's probably not done. Um this three is very useful three seven seven eight four is up here along with something six i want to say so these must be eight and nine six here is very helpful one comes out two comes out nine comes out of here <laughs> that's useful that bounces back over there again um right and we pause for breath with a that was a flurry of activity wasn't it and just take stock for a moment this looks like it has to be three six to me but i'm not certain about that i'm just i'm conscious there's a two looking at this black dot 
So one two, one, two is a combination and two, four are off the cards, which means it's either four, eight. Well, it's not because this can't be four or eight or it's three, six, which is, I think, probably what it has to be. And there's a six here. So that's six. That's three. That's three. That's four. Is that doing anything profoundly more interesting than that? So this dot, well, this dot now has to have a four on it because it's a similar type of thing. It can't be a three, six pair. It doesn't involve one. So the combinations for this are either two and four or four and eight. Oh, in fact, look, there's four and eight looking at that. Oh, so there is a f sort of four, eight thing going on. So this has to be two, four, and the four goes at the bottom, which means that's got to be a two. That's got to be a four. This square is a naked single. That is a five. It amused me yesterday when Mark said <laughs> spotting naked singles is always his favourite type of time of day, just after Pim's o'clock. Um, now, <laughs> what else should we do here? Um, oh, I don't know. It's probably Sudoku, knowing me. Five, oh look, yes, yes it is, it's Sudoku. Five and one can go into the grid. Five must live in one of these squares in the corner down here. Those squares are eight and something, three. Yeah, there we go. Three, eight go into the grid. So three and nine go into the grid. This column needs seven and eight, so we can put those in. That does the eight and the seven and the seven and the five and the five and the one. We need a one up there along with a something. A seven, so we get seven in the corner. One, one, two. Two is two is in the corner. Two, five, nine here, nine here, and five there. What a beautiful puzzle! Let's see if it's right. Yes, nine hundred and seventy-one. Oh, it's been out for a while. Actually, it has been out for a while. Fifty-one days. So it has it has existed in the world for a little while. But that is gorgeous, isn't it? What a uh, is a true diamond in the rough. F jam, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's it's sort of the, this. I think is the hardest skill actually in Sudoku setting is to make a puzzle that is fairly straightforward. No, that's the wrong word. Is to make a puzzle that anybody can do with a little bit of thought, but it's got to have enough about it that it's still cool to do. It's still interesting that when you solve it, you feel you've done a couple of clever things. Um, that that is it's it's a real skill to do that. And that that is what this puzzle achieved. And actually, that though, though the other thing that was clever about it is it wasn't just it wasn't a one trick pony. It wasn't just the middle. That point with the eights, I didn't see that for ages, which was daft. I should have seen that more more quickly. But I like I like the fact that um, I liked something. What was it about this line? I noticed. I noticed these had to have ones on them. Yes, and that disambiguated this. Uh, but I, I was going to say I really like the sort of dog bone thing at the bottom where we could work. Yeah, we could use parity to deduce the, the exact totals. That was really very nice as well. So it's a lovely, a lovely little vignette today. A great example of what you can do with variant Sudoku. F jam, take a bow and let me know how you got on in the comments. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.